Well, <clears throat> it's review day, which means before you go much further, uh, you should make sure that you are working with the worksheet. Uh, some of you may want to finish the entire worksheet and then check all your answers, or maybe you'll want to finish one question and then check your answer, and then maybe finish the second question and check your answer. But at any rate, please do not go beyond this point, unless you've already at least taken a look at questions one or maybe one and two, and then you can pause as often as you need or stop or rewind. But step-by-step -step solutions are coming up. Of course, number one, it looks like we better cross multiply. I'll use the distributive property. I'll subtract 15x from each side. All right, 20x subtract 15x is where that 5x came from. Subtract 20 from each side. Of course, I don't want 5x, so let's divide each side by 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. There is my solution. Number 2, cross multiply. Use the distributive property. Subtract 14x from each side. 16x, subtract 14x, of course, would be 2x. Subtract 4 from each side. Divide each side by 2. Of course, first I gotta figure out what sides match up with what. So I will take DG and compare it to CT. First of all, because they're corresponding sides, and second of all, I actually know the value of DG and I actually know the value of CT. Now DO is one of the sides I'm looking for, so I have to grab that. And then of course it corresponds with CA Substitute in the values I know. Cross multiply. 15 times 14, I better grab a calculator. I don't usually have that one in my head. Divide each side by 10. 21. Oh, we're also supposed to figure out the length of AT. Notice I'm reusing the ratio of DG to CT. Again, they're corresponding sides, and I know the value of each of those. I have to use OG because I'm looking for the value of AT. Since I put DG in the numerator of the first fraction, I must put OG in the numerator of the second one. Substitute the values you know. Cross multiply, 30 times 10, although I don't normally have that memorized, I can figure that out. I know three times one is three, plop down a couple zeros. I know two times 15 is 30. So if I'm sneaky, I might even be able to do that division in my head and come up with 20. Otherwise, grab a calculator, 30 divided by 15, sure enough, it'll be 20. Hot dog. <laughs> yeah, real funny. You know, OT corresponds to OG. OH corresponds to OD. Cross multiply. Distributive property. I need all the x's on one side of the equation, so I'll subtract 12x from each side. 16 take away 12, of course, is 4. So I'm left with 4x. Now I want every number without an x on the other side. So I'll subtract 40 from each side. Of course, 84 subtract 40 is 44. 
Of course, I really don't want the value of 4x's. I want the value of 1x. We'll divide by 4. There's a solution, 11. Uh-oh, we weren't looking for just x. I actually wanted the length of OG. So I have to substitute 11 in for x. Now I've actually answered the question, right? The question didn't ask for the value of x. It asked for the length of segment OG. Since the directions tell us it's a rectangle, we know it's a rectangle. So I know opposite sides have the same length. Add up the four sides, I get the perimeter. Of course, area of a rectangle is length times width. Three times five is 15. Again, since there were units given, I use those units. Perimeter in centimeters, area square centimeters. Scale factor of two. So we have to take the original perimeter, multiply by two. Now, of course, with the area, instead of multiplying by two, we take the original area and multiply by two squared. So we actually have to do 15 times four, and that'll give us 60. So the perimeter of the new rectangle is 32 centimeters, perimeter 60 square centimeters. Ooh, perimeter, and I only know two sides of the triangle. Now again, because the directions tell us it's a right triangle, I know that that is a 90 degree corner, even though it's not labeled in the picture. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Substitute the values I know. Five times five is 25, 12 times 12, 144. That should be some mental math you can do. 144 plus 25. Now, of course, since 12 times 12 is 144, you probably don't have numbers greater than 144 memorized. So you might need to grab a calculator to figure out the square root of 169. It's just 13. Now I can finally find the perimeter. Of course, area of a triangle, one half times base times height. Okay, scale factor one half. Multiply the original perimeter by one half. Multiply the original area by one half squared. So I have to do one half times one half which is one fourth. And interestingly enough, I come up with a decimal. 30 over four reduces to 15 over two. 15 over two would be seven and a half or 7.5. Again, the diagram had labels for the units. So I'm using the units. All right, we learned about AAA similarity. If the three angles match, we're good. Actually, it's AA similarity, isn't it? If we can find two matching angles, we know the third automatically matches. It's AA similarity. So I'm taking a look at the first triangle there, triangle ABC. Determine the measurement of that mystery angle. Oh my goodness, the measurement of angle A is 27 degrees. So we're set. We already knew that the right angles were congruent. Now we've got a second pair. So angle, angle, we know they're similar. Because if you know two of the angles, you actually know all three. Okay, next question. Let's look at triangle ABC. Find the missing angle. It looks like our measurement for angle A is 40 degrees. Oh, oh, oh. 
we've got the 83 matching the 83. But that 40 does not match that 42. And of course, the 57 also does not match that 42. So no, those triangles are not similar. Well, I'll check the first two triangles. Six compares to 10, reduces to three fifths. That was the smallest side on angle on triangle ABC and the smallest on angle DEF. Let's go to the medium ones now. Nine compares to 12. Now that nine is for the side AC, that 12 is for the side DE. Uh-oh, three-fourths and three-fifths don't match. I can stop right now. I don't even have to compare the larger sides. Okay, I'm going to try the middle triangle, DEF, and the last triangle, GHI. Well, let's compare the small sides first. So I'm comparing 10 to 15. That's two-thirds. Now I'll compare the medium ones. 12 compares to 18. It's two-thirds. Largest one on each triangle. 14 compares to 21 is two thirds. Yes, those two triangles are similar. Ooh, but look at the directions. We have to write a similarity statement. So I have to write down triangle DEF similar triangle GHI. All right, wherever I put the D that has to correspond with the G. Wherever I put the E, that has to correspond with the H. Wherever I put the F, that has to correspond with the I. Okay. Again, set up a proportion with my ratios for GO that comes from the triangle on the left hand side. So the GI has to come from the triangle on the right-hand side, and they have to be corresponding parts. GH, of course, was from the left-hand triangle. GP was the right-hand triangle, and of course, those are corresponding parts. Cross-multiply. Hey, we get to practice a little bit of our Algebra 1 skills. Right, multiply that out with foil, or if you'd like to use a model where you're using an area table. Set the equation equal to zero. You could choose to use the quadratic formula here. You could choose to solve by completing the square. I think it's easy, it's just a factor. Each factor needs to be set equal to zero. And then I have to solve each of those equations. If x is negative 29, that's not going to work. Right? If I've got x plus 4 and I plug in negative 29, that doesn't make any sense for the side of a triangle. But if I plug in positive 20, yeah, that makes sense. x plus 4 becomes 24 x plus 5 becomes 25. Those are valid numbers for triangles. This one looks quick and easy. x compares to 4, the same way that 8 compares to 5. Cross multiply. And I guess the only part that's a little bit sneaky is when I take 32 and divide it by 5, it does not come out to be a whole number. 6.4. Okay, again, quick setup. X plus 1 compares to 3. The same way that X plus 3 compares to 4. Cross multiply, use the distributive property. 
isolate the variable. 4x, take away 3x is 1x. Of course, I'm not going to write the 1. I'll just write x. 9, take away 4 is 5. Now, this one's a little bit interesting because I don't know the distance from C to D. Now, segment addition, this takes us way back to, what, late September, early October. I know that segment BD plus the length of segment DC has to equal the length of segment BC. I know the length of the segment BD is X. I know the length of segment BC is 15. If I subtract X from each side, DC equals 15 minus X. Now I can set up my proportion. Cross multiply. 7 times 15, most of us don't go around memorizing that value, so if you have to use a calculator, that's fine. Add 7x each side. 105 divided by 21. Again, some of you might be able to do that in your head. Some of you might say, hey, give me scratch paper and I'll work it out. Some of you will say, nope, grab a calculator. It comes out to be 5. Now, this is a little bit crazy. When I logged into IXL, I noticed that instead of finding a tab for geometry, I found a tab that says Level L Math. If you log on to IXL and it says geometry, that's fantastic. Just go ahead and go there. But if you cannot find a tab that says geometry, for whatever reason, they've decided that we are Level L. Otherwise, everything on IXL is the same.